So what is the purpose of fully connected layer which is also referred as dense layer in Keras framework? Why do we need this layer at all in CNNs? Folks, Nitin here and this is the AI University channel. In this video, I am going to introduce to you another important layer of the convolution neural network called as fully connected layer. It is very important layer when it comes to classifying an image into a label for classification problem perspective or getting the numerical predictions for regression based problems. We will be discussing about its internal working in more easier way. At the end of the video, I will show you one tool using which you can write a digit on the user interface in real time to see various convolution neural network layers of it. So watch this video till the end. If you are new here then consider subscribing to this channel or if you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century. GitHub link for all the required Jupyter notebooks is given in the description section. Please don't forget to like and share this video. In the previous videos, we learnt about various layers of CNN like convolution layer, ReLU layer, dropout layer, flattened layer, etc. And this video is the continuation of those videos. By the way, if you don't know how these neural networks get strained and some of the other related terms like loss function, backpropagation, activation functions, then you can watch this playlist, link of which is given in the i button above and in the description section of this video. So let's learn about fully connected layer now. We know that an image is composed of smaller details of features. Convolution neural network leverages this fact and utilizes its various layers for analyzing each feature in isolation, thereby informing a decision about an image as a whole. A fully connected layer in CNN is the one that takes the end result of the convolution or pooling layer via flattened layer and reaches a classification decision. In fully connected layer, every input is connected to every output by a weight. It serves the purpose of doing the actual classification. Without this layer, a traditional CNN would be unable to spit out the predicted classes. So basically, after applying all the layers like convolution, ReLU, dropout, flattening, etc. The flattened feature map then is passed through an artificial neural network. See this image on the screen. So it is like adding an artificial neural network to our convolution neural network. So this ANN or artificial neural network is made up of the input layer, the fully connected layer and the output layer. The fully connected layer is similar to the hidden layers in ANNs or artificial neural networks. But in this case, it's fully connected. The output layer is where we get the predicted classes. So we pass the whole feature vector which we got as a part of flattening operation to this input layer of ANN and then to fully connected layer. This fully connected layer then combines the features into more attributes that better predicts the classes such as parrot and man. If you want to know more in detail about ANNs, then you can watch this video. Link is given in the i button above. Let me show you an image to discuss about some more details. Assumption here is that we have performed all the convolution, ReLU, flattening operations before feeding the flattened feature vector to this ANN which represents fully connected layer. So this ANN has 5 input neurons. In the first fully connected layer, we have 6 neurons. And in second fully connected layer, we have eight neurons and two output neurons as well. One for parrot and one for man. These two classes can be represented using just one neuron as well. That is one neuron can depict number one or zero. So number one can represent parrot and number zero can represent man. If you have five classes, then, then you should have five neurons in the output layer each neuron depicting one class. So if you have n classes, then you should have n neurons in the output layer. So for simplicity's sake, and to help you understand this concept, I showed two neurons for two classes here. 
so our feature vector data is now passed through this network let's say it predicted uh, the image of parrot with 90 percent probability however it was an aeroplane that means it predicted wrongly hence an error this error is also known as cost function so the cost function of the prediction is calculated it is then back propagated through the system to improve the prediction that is minimizing the value of cost function as well as optimizing the weights which are depicted by these lines or synapses also if you remember from convolution layer video there were feature detectors which were nothing but matrices right so those feature detectors also gets better identifying individual features from an image if you want to know more about back propagation then you can watch this video link is given in the i button above please remember that the fully connected uh, part of the convolution neural network goes through its own back propagation process to determine the most accurate weights so this was the entire flow of data from forward and back propagation perspective let's now see how the classification decision for the parrot or man takes place so let's say we have these hypothetical numbers assigned to this fully connected layer these numbers are in between 0 and 1 and hence depicts the probability value of a neuron that it is confident of finding a specific image feature and 0 means that neuron is not that much confident of finding a feature so every neuron is detecting the specific features this neuron marked with probability 0 0.9 is let's say identifying the feature such as red beak of a parrot pretty confidently and it is passing this feature info to both parrot and man neurons now it's up to these neurons to understand if the feature is meant for them or not then there are these two neurons which are also firing up let's say one is detecting hand of a man and another one is detecting eyes of a man these are also passed to both parrot and man output neurons since these features belongs to a man so this output neuron knows that the results should be predicted as men and hence it will be fired so after several such multiple iterations which are called as epochs in keras framework the output neuron related to men learns that these features in fully connected layer fire up when these features like nose ears eyes belongs to a man on the other hand let's say uh, these other neurons gets fired up when the features are related to a parrot so the output layer actually learns which of the final fully connected neurons to listen to for specific features of an image object so the output layer actually learns which of the final fully connected neurons to listen to for specific features of an object in an image in order to classify it as man or a parrot so now if you provide a new image of men to this network these neurons which can identify features related to men gets fired up to give a collective vote to output node related to men and hence classifying it as a man this node will get a probability of let's say 0.8 or 80 percent suggesting that it's a man if we pass an image of parrot then these neurons in fully connected layers will get fired up to give a collective vote to output node related to parrot and hence classifying it as a parrot this node will get a probability of let's say 0.69 or 69 percent suggesting that it's a parrot now let me show you one tool using which you can see various layers of an image in real time as and when you draw that numerical digit on the screen this tool is created by a gentleman called adam harley i will provide the link of this tool in the description section of this video so this is a tool now let me draw any digit here let's say i want to draw seven so if you see at the bottom this is our image of number seven above that we have the layer which represents convolution layer that shows you different features of this image what kind of convolution it has applied or the feature detector it has applied so and so forth above that we have pooling or subsampling or downsampling layer you can see that size of the convolved image has been reduced here as a part of pooling operation 
still the features are preserved subsequently it is repeating the convolution and pooling layers and then finally we have fully connected and output layers helping to classify this image you can also see the first guess and second guess about this image right here so you can play around uh, to write numbers in a different orientation and see if it is recognizing uh, those numbers in a right manner so folks this is it for this video in the next upcoming videos i will start creating few projects related to object detection image recognition etc so folks let me know if you like this uh, conceptual series related to convolution neural network layers if you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel consider clicking that little subscribe button in case you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever i will release a new video so thanks for hanging out with me guys i will be covering next topic in the upcoming video so keep on watching thank you